You're watching WHSV News 3. 11 minutes of non-stop news and weather starts right now. A concerned neighbor in one part of the valley wants you to slow down. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dion Guillory. And I'm Allison Bruner. Speeding concerns is new at 11 tonight. An Elkton man says speeding is a growing problem. And some children's lives could be at risk. WHSV Stephanie Escobar is live in Elkton tonight to show us where the cars just don't seem to slow down. Stephanie. Dion, I'm here in Shenandoah Avenue, Avenue in Elkton, and as you can see, the speed limit here is 25 miles an hour, but a neighbor here tells me that people actually go through here faster than that, and the problem is that they're putting in danger so, so many kids and pets here in the area. Rick Van Ness enjoys playing with his dogs outside, but he worries they may get hurt. Right there is 25 miles an hour. Now the next one go by, whew. They're just flying. Van Ness house is in front of Shenandoah Avenue in Elkton. He says many travel this road during rush hour. They can bypass Elkton to get to 33. So it's like a shortcut. You don't have to have the traffic lights in the town of Elkton. But some cars go up to 45 miles an hour. His biggest concern is someone getting hurt. If you're doing the speed limit, you can, you can be aware of things. You can s slow down and brake instead of you know, running over an animal or an infant. He says Elton police officers are usually around to monitor speeds. When people see them, they slow down, but when they come across the railroad tracks, they just gas and go. It's almost like East Side Highway Speedway. But he says with a tight budget, police can't be around 24 7. You know, you can have so many people so many times. Vanessa wants people to take their time when driving down the road. Whether they're on a cell phone or maybe they're late for work, you know, if you're that late, you should have left a little sooner. It used to be 35 miles an hour, and as you can see, it, it was, it's now being reduced to 25 miles an hour. He wants to bring awareness because he's afraid that a tragedy will happen. Live in Elton, Stephanie Escobar, WHSV. All right, thank you, Stephanie. New at 11, real estate taxes won't go up in the city of Harrisonburg. Just a couple of hours ago, the city council approved a brand new budget. The city was short more than $370,000, but council members decided to cover that shortfall with money from the unappropriated fund balance. We have new details about this house on Kelly Street. The Harrisonburg City Council just voted tonight to declare it a blighted property. Council members decided to take over the house by eminent domain. City leaders say they have tried getting in touch with the owner for about a year and haven't heard anything. New at 11 tonight, several Valley police officers are going through a special bike school to keep you safe. Officers from 12 different communities spent the day at Hillendale Park in Harrisonburg to learn how to better respond to an incident on a bike. Today, the officers went through a cone course. This is helping to better prepare them for incidents like patrol procedures, cycling and traffic, and just common injuries. Master Police Officer Scott Drugo tells me it's not only easier to reach certain areas on a bike, it's also less intimidating. We're in a car, we've got that, that glass between us or a door between us, and uh, it's a little harder to approach a car. So some people will naturally approach a bike officer a little quicker and easier and, and be more open to uh, just because you're out in the open and out in the elements with them. Okay, take a close look at this. I was amazed when they all did this. They got five officers each on a bike in this little box. Here you can see them all going in, but I promise you five get in there. It was pretty impressive. This bike school, well, it continues through Friday. There's four of them. Can we get the fifth one? Let's see, he's coming in. And there they all go. That's pretty impressive, right, Dion? Oh, wow. New at 11, <laughs> Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel says he has no choice but to go forward with employee furloughs. Pentagon civilian workers will face 11 days of unpaid leave. That begins July 8th. Hagel says cut to any other part of the budget could have jeopardized national security. Right now, I can't, uh, I, I can't run this institution into the ditch. This will go until uh, the end of the fiscal year. Um, We've taken it as close to the line as, as we can and still capable of protecting this country and this country's interests around the world. 
The Pentagon must cut as much as $41 billion by September 30th because of forced spending cuts that went into effect on March 1st. Also new at 11, home sales in Harrisonburg and Rockingham County soared to the highest level in nearly three years. According to Harrisonburg Housing Today, there were 100 home sales last month, bringing us to the highest level since June 2010. Buyers had their last chance to cash in on the federal home buyer tax credit. We are checking in tonight on a Valley family adopting a child from Russia. There are, they are just one of thousands of families pleading with Moscow to allow the adoptions to go through. Mill and Diana Wallen are trying to adopt Maxim. A controversial law prevents them and other Americans from adopting Russian children, including families like the Wallens that had already started the process. A spokesperson for the family says the children are the real victims. Look at the needs of the children and families that are that are caught in the uh, consequences of this and um, to actually call on the global community to recognize that th that in that single act the US uh, the Russian government violated the human rights of 740,000 children and Russia's president signed the adoption measure into law late last year now to a WHSF WHSV exclusive we have learned that Harrisonburg detectives will be asking questions again in a suspicious death that's been unsolved since November. These details you'll hear only on three tonight. The medical examiner telling us that he has not been able to determine a cause of death for Thaxton Keith Sims. He was found dead in his apartment. Now if you know anything that can help police call crime solvers at the number on your screen 540-574-5050. Right now, O.J. Simpson is getting ready for a third day back in court. Tomorrow, the football legend is expected to take the stand. Simpson argues his old lawyer, Yale Gallanter, gave him bad legal advice, which landed him behind bars. That lawyer's co-counsel testified that he didn't discuss a possible plea deal with Simpson because Gallanter claimed he took care of it. Angelina Jolie's announcement that she had a double mastectomy is highlighting the importance of breast cancer awareness. Yeah. Dr. Heidi Rafferty is a breast surgeon at RMA to perform surgeries similar to a mastectomy. She says women at high risk of getting breast cancer may want to consider it to reduce their chances of getting the disease. If I have mastectomies with immediate reconstruction, I can reduce that risk by greater than 90%. It's a very viable option. And in her case, I think it was a good choice. She says women should get a mammogram and an MRI at least once a year. To find out when the next mobile mammogram screening will be in your area, click on our Find It button on WHSV.com. Virginia's legal blood alcohol level of 0 .08 could change if one government agency gets its way. The National Transportation Safety Board wants the level in the U.S. lowered to 0 .05. Research shows the lower level would save thousands of lives a year, and it would put the U.S. in line with standards used in most of the industrialized world. Impairment starts with the first drink. By 0.05, most drivers experience diminished visual function, increased drowsiness, and reduced vigilance. But those in the alcohol beverage industry say they see no reason for the change, explaining that the recommendations only target moderate social drinkers. Right now, a disturbing symbol of the strength of Superstorm Sandy is finally being removed. This roller coaster was a mangled mess of tangled metal after Sandy ripped through the region last fall. Work crews used a crane to dismantle what's left of that coaster. The boardwalk there has already been rebuilt. Prince Harry, escorted by New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, got a first-hand look at it. Now your first alert storm team forecast with Chief Meteorologist George Hirschman. Pretty nice night if you've been out at all. Very mild out there, although we do have a cloud cover. And a few people did experience a little bit of uh, precipitation, but it was a very little bit of precip, folks. Not looking for much tonight at all. Satellite radar showing us the cloud cover in place. And we do see some precipitation here in the graphics, but not really making it to the ground. Surface level is uh, pretty uh, dry right now. Uh, so uh, take a chance. Go out and enjoy yourself for a good walk tonight. It's certainly comfortable out there. 60 degrees right now. Mostly cloudy. Southwest winds about 5 miles per hour. The weather watchers calling in these numbers tonight. And uh, they are all very comfortable as well. 57 tenths.
Paris Legion, as well as down in Waynesboro, 61 Stanton, 55 over in Churchville with Lyle. Lucy said 53 was a good number for her. So around the area, and, and we're going to see these numbers falling a few more degrees, but not too much further than where they are right now. And to me, that's a comfortable night. You leave that window open a bit. Good sleeping weather, folks. Well, a forecast map about midnight, not showing as much as far as any precipitation. We do see this building uh, warm front just to the northwest of us and some high pressure to our south. Uh, that's helping to pump some warmer air in here. Much appreciated tomorrow is uh, that air is going to become warm and then almost on the hot side. That uh, frontal system is going to sneak just to the north of us and then it's pretty much going to take up residency for a few days. It will get windy tomorrow though. Uh, they're kicking up 10 to 20 mile per hour so be uh, ready for that and that'll be the biggest problem through the day. As we get into the evening hours and later uh, there's a chance for a little bit of shower activity out there uh, not looking for too much tomorrow as we move through the week uh, we'll get another chance for some showers and maybe even a thunderstorm temperatures tonight in the lower 50s here in the valley around 50 or maybe upper 40s as we go to the west certainly a mild and comfortable night out there uh, we uh, then turn our attention to tomorrow 85 i think that's a pretty good number we got to remember we started out today with some frost on the ground in some areas wow and now we're talking about mid 80s for your temperatures and that's from moorfield harrisonburg stan 84 waynesboro and i think there's a maybe a few people are going to experience some upper 80s the record for tomorrow is 92 don't think we're going to threaten that at all but a very comfortable day just the same and uh, into the uh, lower and maybe mid 80s as we look over in the highland areas uh, just pretty good out there for sure uh, we now look at the seven day forecast interesting forecast that we do have and i wanted to point something out tonight you know you were talking about these bars now that we've uh, put in uh, to give you an indication as to what's going on out there. There is a yellow bar for inconvenient weather, a red bar for severe weather, and then the green bars. And just because there's a green bar doesn't mean it might not rain. Just might mean it's going to get a little rain, might have a thunderstorm. If there's going to be severe weather, well, then those bars are going to change colors. And it's an indication for the next few days. 85 tomorrow, upper 70s as Thursday and Friday. Uh, that'll continue as we move into the weekend. Once through the weekend, we'll cool to the mid-70s. Not too bad, folks. Chance of some showers and thunderstorms. Uh, not going to be a washout by any means. Take an umbrella with it. You'll be just fine out there. And enjoy tomorrow. Big change of pace, so to speak. Very nice. Yes. Thanks, George. Well, iPhone, Android, Blackberry. You may remember that cell phone maker, what the company is doing now to make a comeback. With printing and computers and the Internet is relatively easy. Easy to make fake prescription drugs is a growing trend that can lead to deadly results. We investigate how you can make sure the pills in your medicine cabinet are safe. And talk to us online, ways right there on your screen. You can reach Allison and I on Facebook and Twitter. In tonight's scams and ripoffs, we are taking a closer look at counterfeit drugs. Police say this world is expanding rapidly with potentially deadly consequences. Brandy Hitch shows us how to make sure the pills in your cabinet are safe. New at 11. This one right here is they may look real, but these pills are fake. From counterfeit cancer-fighting drugs to phony cholesterol medication, even bogus Viagra. Pills of all kinds are being manufactured overseas with materials that could kill you. They're cutting it with rat poison. They're cutting it with gypsum board. We've seen highway paint, leaded highway paint on some of our yellow medicines. Pfizer tested counterfeit drugs for ABC News using a mobile lab that instantly indicates if a dose is fake. And the drug maker is now working with law enforcement overseas to crack down on massive operations producing phony pills. With printing and computers and the internet is relatively easy now. The key is packaging. The pills on the right are real, the ones on the left fake. It's hard to tell them apart. Counterfeiting experts also say most are produced in Asia and sold without a prescription. Hugely sold on the internet, Craigslist. Well, we've seen a real spike in counterfeit drugs coming through. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says its crackdown on fake drugs is so heavy, criminals are now hiding pills inside speakers, beauty products, and power supplies. Here they x-ray more than a million parcels each month and have even found counterfeit items inside shoes. There are dozens of legitimate websites that sell safe pharmaceuticals as long as you know what to look for. Do they require a prescription? Do they have a pharmacist on site? And are they located in the United States? There are people who will say, I can't afford these drugs, so I have to turn to these means. If it were a dollar, you'd find a counterfeiter selling it for, for 30 cents. And investigators say oftentimes the counterfeit pill will contain no active medicine at all. 
Brandy hit ABC News, Los Angeles. And our series on fake items continues tomorrow night at 11 with fake electronics, how they are making their way into the market with potentially deadly consequences. After mi missing an annual meeting for shareholders and developers, Google's CEO Larry Page explains his absence tonight. With that story and more, here's Bloomberg's Deborah Kostrin. Google CEO Larry Page finally addresses questions about his personal health. Page says following a bad cold 14 years ago, he was diagnosed with left vocal cord paralysis and detected impairment in his other vocal cord about a year ago. He's still able to work with the condition, but it does explain why he's missed several company events. Well, the S&P hitting another record as the markets were higher once again on more optimism about the U.S. economy. Well, Pentagon officials will impose furloughs on as many as 680,000 civilian employees Starting July 8th, in response to the federal budget cuts, affected workers will be taking 11 days of unpaid leave through September, which works out to one day a week. BlackBerry, trying to make a comeback, will offer its once popular BlackBerry Messenger service on iPhones and devices running Google's Android software through a free app. It's a move that loosens the company's grip on one of the company's most valuable services. I'm Depp Rakostrin with the Bloomberg After the Bell Report. Good evening. I'm Michael Gokenauer with the Wholesaler Lance Siphon Gokenauer Investment Group of Wells Fargo Advisors. And here are your stocks of local interest for Tuesday. He's been called a hero in the Cleveland kidnappings case. Hear how one restaurant is honoring Charles Ramsey. Plus, why a recent paint job in a parking lot reinforces the value of spell check. Now to two more stories, all new at 11. You can say it's a sandwich fit for a hero. A diner in Cleveland is honoring Charles Ramsey with a sandwich bearing his name. You may remember Ramsey is the man who helped Three women escaped from a decade of captivity inside his neighbor's home. The Ramsey includes an eight ounce burger, secret sauce, lettuce, cheese, bread, and butter pickles, all served on a sesame seed bun. With a side of tater tots, it's already a hit. It's delicious. Very good. Very good. What do you think about the man behind the burger, Charles? Oh, I'm obsessed. I've been following it. I think the guy's great. I, I really am so proud to know that he's from Cleveland. Mm. Charles actually works at the diner where the sandwich is on sale through May 19th. I'm hungry, but this may help you lose your appetite. A spelling mishap brought to you by a worker in a Pacific Grove, California store. Take a look at this typo. Interance only in the parking <laughs> lot of a Trader Joe's. They were hired by the store to write entrance only. But as you can see, the job didn't go so well. But the error, as you can see here, has since been corrected. So, mm. you know. <laughs> You gotta watch out who you hire from. Yes. If you knew what an ants was, nothing would have been a problem because <laughs> that's the only place ants are allowed to enter. There you go. Oh, oh that's Darren. Good, Darren. No, I, no, it's not. Oh. Let's. But yeah. what is good? Yeah, is baseball. Tell us what's good. <laughs> and tonight we have plenty of baseball to get to, including JMU at home in their regular season home finale against Allison's Woo! Liberty Flames. Highlights from the Dukes on the way. I don't think she's going to like them. And up and down the valley we go. We're hitting a few games on the high school circuit. Plenty of teams, three districts to choose from. We'll see from all of them. Highlights on the way coming up in sports.